Contrary to popular belief, early interactions between the Aboriginals and the British colonisers were not always violent. There are many instances of the Aboriginal people and the Brits getting along peacefully with no bloodshed, and in this video, I'm going to be covering one of these incredible stories. The main man involved in this story, William Buckley, was born in Cheshire, England in the year 1780. He served as a soldier and fought against Napoleon under the Duke of York in his younger years. His military service would be short-lived, however, as he sustained a hand injury during his service and returned to London, where soon after, he would be convicted of knowingly receiving a bolt of stolen cloth. He insisted that he was merely holding it for a woman and didn't know it was stolen, but unfortunately, the courts didn't believe him and he was sentenced to 14 years as a convict in New South Wales, which is really where our story begins. Buckley, along with some other convicts, left England in 1803 aboard the HMS Calcutta, which was one of two ships sent to Port Phillip to form a settlement in Victoria near modern-day Sorrento. Unfortunately, the new settlement named Sullivan Bay quickly ran into many problems including a lack of fresh water and a lack of good quality soil for farming. Consequently, a decision was made a few weeks after the landing to abandon the site and try to start fresh in Tasmania. Upon hearing that the settlement was to be moved, Buckley and three other convicts decided to try their luck and escaped into the bush. You might be thinking it'd be quite easy to disappear amongst the thick shrub of Australia, and you'd be right, for most people that is. The problem for Buckley was that he had a very noticeable figure and would have easily been recognised. He reportedly stood well over six foot, with reports varying from about six foot three to as tall as six foot seven. However, Buckley himself said he was six foot five, and that's also right down the middle, so let's just go with that, shall we? He was also described by George Russell, no, not the F1 driver, I'd presume, as having a face very much marked by smallpox, which also would not have played to his favour. But regardless of his visual shortcomings, he was now a free man, as he and two of the other convicts managed to escape, the other one being shot and severely injured during the escape attempt. But luckily for Buckley and the others, they were not injured. The three remaining men managed to make their way around Port Phillip Bay, where they would end up splitting nearby present-day Melbourne. During the weeks following his great escape, Buckley recalled that he avoided contact with the Aboriginals, presumably out of fear they would kill him. During this time, he recalled that he travelled around Port Phillip Bay and as far as the Bellarin Peninsula near modern-day Geelong, which is a very far distance, especially on foot. In an account collected by George Langhorne in 1835, Buckley recalled his first meeting with a small Aboriginal family group who gave him immense help and shared food with him, as well as even beginning to teach him some of their language. After a while, however, they would go their separate ways. Soon after, he would encounter another group of Aboriginals, this time a group of Watarong women. Prior to his encounter, Buckley had taken a spear used to mark a grave for use as a walking stick. Upon seeing this, the women befriended him after recognising the spear as belonging to a relative who had recently died, and believing he was the returned spirit of the former tribesmen. Due to this belief, he was joyfully welcomed and adopted by the group of natives. He would live amongst the Watarong people on the Bellarin Peninsula for 32 years, being treated with great affection and respect the entire time. During his life with the Ratarong people, he became so respected and appreciated that he was named a Nugurong Gator, meaning a person of considerable respect and one whose voice was influential in deciding matters of war and peace. Also during his stay, Buckley unsurprisingly became an expert with Aboriginal weapons. However, despite this, he was banned from participating in tribal wars as he was a revered spirit. He would also end up having at least two Aboriginal wives during his stay with the tribe and almost certainly a daughter by one of them. It is reported this daughter was possibly killed by the tribe for preferring an Aboriginal man, in quotation marks. Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm not 100% sure of what they mean by that, but I personally think the only thing they could be meaning is that she was killed for wishing to date and be with an Aboriginal man, and the tribe didn't like that considering she was half white. And as we'll get into later, it doesn't seem like the tribe held white people in a very high regard. You might be asking, then, why did they let Buckley marry an Aboriginal? Well, I think it could have been because, as stated earlier, they believed he was the reincarnation of a previously deceased tribesman, so therefore he was an Aboriginal, in their eyes, which wouldn't have applied to his daughter, especially if she looked particularly white. 
in saying that though, that's just the conclusion I've come to. So if you guys thought it might have meant something else, I'd be eager to hear from you in the comments. It's also worth noting that there is a possibility that she was not killed, as Buckley apparently also stated that he gave her up in order to prevent unrest among the Aboriginal men, preferring to stay alive and to return to the simple life. If Buckley is to be believed, as he later recalled, he was a very central part of the Aboriginal way of life, and he had often witnessed wars, raids, and blood feuds during his time with them, which is very important information as little is known about the warfare between Indigenous groups. Finally though, after 32 years, this man's incredible time with the Aboriginals came to an end as he eagerly appeared at the campsite of John Batman's Port Phillip Association, with a party of Aboriginals by his side who had told him about a sighting of the ship which they had actually initially intended to rob. Wearing kangaroo skins and carrying Aboriginal weapons, Buckley walked into the camp occupied by three European men named William Todd, James Gum, and Alexander Thompson, as well as five Sydney Aboriginal people. Todd later recalled in his journal what took place in this incredible reunion. About two o'clock, a white man came walking up to the native huts. A most surprising height. Clad the same as the natives, he seemed highly pleased to see us. We brought him a piece of bread, which he ate heartily, and told us immediately what it was. He also informs us that he has been above 20 years in this country, during which time he has been with the natives. He then told us his name was William Buckley. Being so long with the natives, he has nearly forgot the English language, but the native languages he can speak fluently. During his reunion with his fellow Europeans, the men treated him with great kindness. At some point, Buckley showed them the letters WB tattooed on his arm, Fearful of being shot, he told them he was a shipwrecked soldier, but a few days later revealed his identity, to the amazement of everybody present. Buckley later recalled that he had known of European ships being nearby prior to this one, but he was fearful of being shot for obvious reasons, until eventually he managed to work himself up into doing it. His fears were perhaps quite misplaced though, as in September of that same year of his reunion, two months later, he was granted a pardon by Lieutenant Governor Arthur in Van Diemen's Land, now known as Tasmania. Following his reintroduction to Western society, he was given the position of interpreter to the natives and one as a guide for Captain Foster Fryans, among others. On the 4th of February 1836, he accompanied Joseph Gellibrand and his party on a trip west from Melbourne, heading toward Geelong, where they actually ran into a group of Aboriginal people with whom Buckley had lived. Gellibrand later recalled his recollection of this reunion as follows. February 5th, 1836. I directed Buckley to advance, and we would follow him at a distance of a quarter of a mile. Buckley made towards a native well, and after he had rode about eight miles, we heard a cooey. When we arrived at the spot, I witnessed one of the most pleasing and affecting sights. There were three men, five women, and about twelve children. Buckley had dismounted, and they were all clinging around him, and tears of joy and delight running down their cheeks. It was truly an affecting sight, and proved the affection which these people entertained for Buckley. Amongst the number were a little old man and an old woman, one of his wives. Buckley told me this was his old friend with whom he had lived and associated 30 years. A while after returning from this trip, Buckley had become disenchanted with his new way of life and the people around him, so he decided to leave for Van Diemen's Land, where he would live the remaining 19 years of his life. He would work odd jobs in Van Diemen's Land, and eventually settled down and married a widow by the name of Julia Eager. They never had children, although Julia had a child from a previous marriage, who Buckley would end up claiming as his. After a long life of 76 years, William Buckley died in 1856 when he fell out of his gig, which is basically a small horse-drawn carriage, at Green Pond near Hobart. Buckley was buried in St George's Burial Ground, Battery Point, and a plaque commemorates him at Buckley's Rest, a small park in Sandy Bay, Hobart, to this day. Hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed researching it. This was a truly fascinating tale, and it is by far not the only one of this style. So if you wanted me to make more videos on stories like this, make sure to let me know in the comments, as well as any other video ideas you had. But yeah, that's going to be it for this one. I hope you guys had a great day, night, wherever you are, and I hope to see you lovely people in the next one.